Howdy, Jason Lewis here. And today on Auto Edit, I'm gonna show you the first upgrade to the ranch wagon here. Actually, the second upgrade. The first upgrade, of course, was the Mexican blankets on the front seats because I was just tired of sitting on that skanky foam and the springs were poking me in the butt as I was driving. So, what we're gonna do now is swap the stock carb out for this Holly 670 all aluminum Street Avenger carb. You can get this thing online for under 400 bucks, Jag, Summit, wherever. Now, a carburetor upgrade on your car is one of the most high reward tasks. It's something you shouldn't be afraid of doing. It's really quite easy, kind of fun to do, and the rewards are immense. You get better power, better drivability, and it's fun and it looks cool. Check this out. So for all of you unboxing fans, here is the new car coming out of the box. Good like Christmas morning. This Street Avenger has vacuum actuated secondaries for well-behaved street manners and looks great in aluminum. The kit comes with most of the parts you'll need to complete the install, but here are some of the things you might need from the parts store. Throttle cable ball fittings, return springs, and now would be a great time to replace your fuel filter. So let's dig in. First, remove the air filter old fuel filter, vacuum advance tube, heat risers for the old choke, throttle linkage and transmission kick down arm. Now you're ready to remove the four nuts at the base of the old carb and then carefully lift it off the intake manifold. Adding great looks and performance at the same time is every hot rodder's dream and why this upgrade is so much fun. So you can see that getting the old carb off is no big deal. Just make sure that you don't strip any of your bolts and save everything until you're done with the install just to make sure you don't need something you know, before you're done. Now I'm going to throw this new one on and plumb it up. Make sure to clean the intake manifold thoroughly before putting the new gasket and carb in place. Tighten the bolts in a diagonal pattern. Attach the throttle cable ball that fits your application into a hole on the arm. You may end up moving this to enable full travel. I ended up in the lower hole on the throttle arm. Then attach your transmission kickdown lever with a retaining clip and your throttle return spring. Have a friend press the gas pedal and watch to make sure everything is operating properly and that you get wide open throttle. Now it's time to plumb the front and rear bowls with the supplied fittings, fuel line, and T. So that's the basic meat and potatoes of the install. Very straightforward. If you get lost, there's a pretty detailed instruction booklet that comes with this thing. Now just make sure you pay attention to the mechanical details, such as the throttle, full travel, and the transmission kick down. I went ahead and wired the electric choke into a 12 volt switched on source, and I'm about to plug the vacuum advance for the distributor in. I just happen to have some vacuum hose in a spare box in the garage. I know almost all car guys do. And that's the basic install. Let's put the air cleaner on. Again, I had a spare sitting on a shelf in my garage. And this, don't forget to put the gasket on. Put your air cleaner on, double check. And there you have it. Your carb is now installed, and we're about to fire this thing up and check it with the factory settings and see how close it is tune-wise. While I was working around the top of the engine, I couldn't help but to clean up and organize the plug wires and made sure to slap my sweet new sticker on the air cleaner. So now it's time to crank it. I've double checked everything. Everything seems tight. We'll check for fuel leaks, but right now just crank it let the fuel pump fill the bowls with fuel. I'll double check it and we'll fire it up. Well, everything looks great in here, not a single leak. So now let's try to fire it and see what happens. Once the engine is running, check the sight glass on the sides of the float bowls to make sure the fuel level is correct. Holly recommends just below halfway on the glass, and this looks pretty good to me. And there you have
have it. A carb swap, as simple as that. Now I haven't put a screwdriver to a single adjustment on this thing. Now I'll drive it around and see if it needs a little timing or take a little timing out or if I can fine tune it. But right out of the box, I can tell right now, it's gonna be night and day better. And now for the first drive with this exclusive, never before seen on the interwebs, Underhood Carburetor POV Cam. recommend doing this swap. This thing has now become a very practical and enjoyable, much, even much more enjoyable drive. So one of the things I really appreciate about this upgrade is how much more drivable and how much easier and less stress it is to drive this car in normal around town traffic. I keep saying the word drivability, and I really can't emphasize enough about how much improvement just this simple carb swap has added to that on this car. I used to have to bury my foot in the gas just to keep up with everyday traffic, and now I barely, you know, quarter throttle, half throttle, and that's it, and I'm now up with traffic. I don't feel like I'm being run over or in the way. And that's a huge difference in the stress level or the, you know, practicality of a car like this in your daily life. I would say the only downside to having this much more of a drivable and practical machine is that other things become glaringly bad, like the drum brakes are now horribly inadequate for what this car is capable of. But that's another upgrade, more fun. So until next time, enjoy your drive.